Well, I just want to show you how things are going with my uh, Beats, Swiss Shard, the Ruby Red, and the Rainbow. Before I do that, I just want to make a quick announcement about the, the light giveaway. That will be ending tomorrow night, Friday. If you're just seeing this tomorrow or whenever, so it's going to be Friday, August 3rd, that I'm going to announce the winner of the lights. So you still have some time to get in if you're seeing this before then. I'm really surprised at how many people sent me an email and uh, said they wanted the light. And that's awesome. You know, so many people have been contacting me about the light, telling me their stories, why they want it. And that's just awesome. On top of that, I've been getting a lot of comments lately of people asking questions or just commenting in general. And I love that. I love, you know, comment. I love comments. I love uh, being able to talk to you guys, give you answers if I have the answers, or tell you, hey, you know, I don't really know because sometimes that's the case. But anyways, let me just show you a quick update on these beats and shard. As you can see, things are going great. This is usually about the point when things go wrong with uh, shard and beats. Right now, nothing's going wrong. Shard tends to grow kind of ragged like that. These beats are looking phenomenal. Very few holes. Very, very, very happy with the beats. Beautiful. This is the Ruby Shard, Ruby Red Shard. Looking fantastic as well. So just in case you haven't seen my other videos where I talked about this, let me just remind you of how I planted these. I planted these dry, all three of them, on top of the soil, watered them heavily, and then just put a blackout lid on top. So just another tray that was covered over the top of them. And I left them there until they were pretty much all germinated. And the beets looked pretty good when I took the lid off. Both shards looked kind of funny. Um, there was a ton of root hairs trying to spread around. The shard might have been might have done a little bit better with a little bit of soil over it, but I've had kind of a mixed result with that. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. So the other thing I did is I just lightly sprinkled a little bit of vermiculite on the top of the seed. Like it wasn't even covering the seed. It was just enough vermiculite to be touching each seed. And that was just to keep the seed hulls moist so, so that they would hopefully fall off. And as you can see, there is not a lot of seed holes. I'm happy with that. And I, I want to say that I'm pretty sure I remember who it was that told me that they like this method. And I think it was Dave Mello. And if that's not who it was, I'm sorry. And if it that is who it was, then... Uh, I wanted to make sure you got the shout out. So one thing to keep in mind about this as well, this is on like the back wall of the microgreens palace and it doesn't get a ton of light here. So these are kind of getting just like an overcast all day. There's no like real direct light. And I'm not sure if that might be a contributing factor to how they're growing. But anyways, I hope you guys like that. And these are pretty much ready to harvest. I'm going to let them go a little bit longer. So all these seeds came from True Leaf Market, which is my seed supplier. The seed company I happen to be an affiliate for because I'm so happy with their seed. And I talk about it so much that I figured why not become an affiliate for them. So I will be putting my affiliate link in the description. And if you click that link and you go there and you purchase seeds, I can earn a commission 
and it will be no expense to you at all. It doesn't matter if you go through my link or you go straight through them. There's no difference to you. And if you do use my link, I obviously appreciate that, but you don't have to. It's up to you.